China is building its multi-modular Tiangong space station and recently sent its first three-person long-duration crew to the fledgling outpost. That means there are currently two occupied destinations in low Earth orbit and 10 people in space, including seven at the International Space Station. Tiangong is the 12th occupied space station in human history and the third multi-modular orbiting laboratory after Mir and the ISS. However, it's taken China decades to get to this point. I'm going to briefly go over the country's human spaceflight ambitions and how Tiangong fits into the overall plans for the Chinese space program. But first, I want to welcome all of my new subscribers and thank everybody for engaging in comments. I really appreciate it. If you want to join this community of human spaceflight enthusiasts outside YouTube, consider joining our Discord server. And if you want to help me in my goal to bring you amazing human spaceflight content full-time, consider supporting me on Patreon. Depending on the level you pledge at, you could get access to exclusive graphics and content, as well as your name in future videos. Links are in the description below. If you can't support Orbital Velocity financially, no worries. All you need to do is watch and share this video and launch that like button into orbit. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss another video. Now let's talk about China's Tiangong space station. Before jumping straight into the Tiangong space station, it'll be important to get a general overview of China's human spaceflight ambitions over the last several decades. China has been methodically pushing its human spaceflight program forward. It's been a slow and steady process with only seven crewed flights into space since the country's first in 2003. China's astronauts, or Taikonauts, are launched into space in a Shenzhou spacecraft atop a Long March 2F rocket. The Shenzhou program and subsequent space laboratory and space station programs fall under Project 921, which began in 1992. Ultimately, Project 921 was split into three phases. Phase 1 was to get humans into space and test the Shenzhou spacecraft and other skill sets needed for long-duration flights such as spacewalks. Shenzhou, which is Mandarin for Divine Vessel, is similar to the Russian Soyuz spacecraft but has some minor differences. For example, it has significantly more habitable volume, 14 cubic meters, versus the Soyuz is 10. Like Soyuz, it has three parts, a service module, a re-entry module, and an orbital module. In total, Shenzhou is 2.8 meters wide and 9.25 meters long, with a solar panel wingspan of about 17 meters. Its mass is roughly 7,800 kilograms. Shenzhou's orbital module is larger than the Soyuz, and early versions of it had its own propulsion system and solar panels in order to operate independently for a time after it was separated from the re-entry module. Only the re-entry module is designed to return to Earth. The first crewed flight was Shenzhou 5, which saw Yang Li Wei orbit Earth 14 times before returning. Two more missions occurred in 2005 and 2008, with two and three people respectively. The latter even saw China perform its first spacewalk with its own spacesuit design called Fei Tian. Starting with Shenzhou 9 in 2012, China began the second phase of its human spaceflight project by sending crews to small space laboratories. Two single-module labs called Tiangong-1 and Tiangong-2 were launched in 2011 and 2016. Tiangong means Heavenly Palace. These small outposts were 10.4 meters long and 3.35 meters wide with a pressurized volume of 15 cubic meters. They also had two deployable solar panels. Tiangong-1 was visited by one uncrewed Shenzhou spacecraft and two crewed Shenzhou spacecraft, while Tiangong-2 was visited by a single Shenzhou crew and a single unpiloted cargo ship based on the Tiangong design called Tianzhou, which means heavenly ship. Tiangong-1 was occupied for a total of about 22 days in 2012 and 2013, while Tiangong-2 was occupied for just over 26 days in 2016. This phase of the program was similar to the early Soviet Salyut space station era, and saw China increase its skills in maintaining an outpost in orbit for longer periods of time and set new records for the country, including its longest human space flight to date, 33 days, and the flight of the first female taikonaut, Leo Yang. It would be five years later in 2021 before China was ready to begin phase three of its human spaceflight program, building the large multi-modular Tiangong space station. The best analog for this large outpost would be the Russian Mir space station, which orbited Earth between 1986 and 2001. Set to have at least three modules, this outpost size can also be compared to Mir. Tiangong is expected to be 100 metric tons when completed. Mir was a little larger at 130 metric tons by the end of its life. This would also make it about a quarter the size of the 420 metric ton International Space Station. Assembly is slated to occur over the course of nearly a dozen launches, including crewed flights, cargo resupply spacecraft, and several large pressurized modules through the end of 2022. This sequence began April 29, 2021 with the launch of the Tianhe core module. 
It was orbited using the new Long March 5B rocket and placed in a circular orbit roughly 380 kilometers inclined 41.5 degrees from the equator. For comparison, the ISS orbits at around 400 kilometers inclined 51.6 degrees from the equator. Tianhe, which means Harmony of the Heavens, is 4.2 meters wide and 16.6 .6 meters long and has a habitable volume of 50 cubic meters. It has two large solar panels and has a mass of about 22,600 kilograms. It's also equipped with four ion thrusters, which use electricity to generate ions in order to accelerate the outpost. This more efficient form of propulsion is likely to be used to help keep Tiangong in orbit. All spacecraft in low Earth orbit experience slight atmospheric drag, requiring occasional boosts to raise its altitude. Using electric ion propulsion requires less propellant mass than traditional chemical thrusters. Similar to the Zvezda service module on the ISS, the core has living quarters for three Taikonauts, provides power, guidance, navigation, and orientation, as well as propulsion and life support. It also has five docking ports, one aft, and four in the forward docking hub, which also has an airlock hatch for spacewalks. Shenzhou, Tiangong, and Tianzhou all have docking mechanisms based on the androgynous peripheral attach system. The most notable example of this type of system is the one used by the space shuttles to dock with Mir and the ISS. Also on Tianhe is a robotic arm that is smaller but visually similar to the Canadarm2 remote manipulator system on the ISS. The orbiting of Tianhe was followed a month later by the launch of a Long March 7 rocket with the unpiloted Tianzhou-2 cargo ship, which docked at the aft port of Tianhe. Two weeks later, Shenzhou-12 with Chinese taikonauts Nei Hesheng, Liu Boming, and Tang Hongbo launched and docked with the forward port of Tianhe. They are expected to remain aboard until September as the first long-duration expedition for the Tiangong space station. This will make their flight the longest in Chinese space program history, but it'll likely be eclipsed by subsequent crews. Two more cargo and crewed spacecraft are scheduled to dock and occupy the Tianhe module, preparing it for two new laboratory cabin modules slated for mid-2022. The first of these is the Wentian module, which could arrive in early summer 2022 after the launching atop a Long March 5B rocket. Wentian, which means Quest for the Heavens, is expected to be 4.2 meters wide and 14.4 meters long, with a mass of about 20,000 kilograms. It'll also have two steerable solar panels. In addition to having several backup functions for the Tianhe core module, it'll also provide a pressurized research environment as well as attach points for external experiments. Once Wen Tian rendezvous with the Chinese outpost, it'll autonomously dock with the forward port. It'll then use a special robotic arm to move the module to its final location on the starboard side of Tianhe. Meng Tian, which means dreaming of the heavens, will be nearly identical to Wen Tian with some external differences. It'll also launch atop a Long March 5B rocket in late summer 2022. In the same fashion of its sibling module, it'll dock with the forward port of Tianhe before being moved to the port side of the core module. Because both lab modules require the use of Tianhe's forward port, it'll necessitate the Shenzhou spacecraft to eventually dock with the Earth-facing port of the core module. Over the course of the Shenzhou-14 mission and subsequent Shenzhou-15 mission, paired with the Tianzhou-5 cargo ship, in the fall of 2022, the outpost will be readied for full science operations and potential future international cooperation as early as 2023. During and after its construction, Tiangong is expected to host all sorts of experiments ranging from life sciences to physics as well as human studies. Experiments from international organizations are also expected. China also hopes foreign astronauts, such as those from Russia or the European Space Agency, could eventually travel to and stay aboard the outpost. Regular crews of three are expected to launch every three to six months via the Shenzhou spacecraft. Tiangong could also be a place for China to verify its next generation crewed spacecraft design which is another capsule that is expected to be partially reusable with the ability to carry up to seven people to low-Earth orbit or eventually even fly missions to the moon. Additionally, while it's still several years away from launch, China hopes to send a Hubble Space Telescope class observatory to the same orbit as the space station, which could periodically rendezvous with the outpost for repairs and upgrades. Altogether, this space station has an expected life of about 10 to 15 years. After this, unless the outpost's life is extended, it'll likely be deorbited, probably over the South Pacific Ocean. Much like the rest of China's space ambitions, each program builds on the previous experiences in order to make further leaps forward. While no official timeline or structure has been established for human space exploration beyond low Earth orbit, the country has made no doubt of its intentions to continue farther. Already, China and Russia, with other international partners having been openly invited, have agreed to cooperate on an international lunar research station which would start robotically and eventually be human-tended by the mid-2030s. 
While it's currently unclear where this base may ultimately be located, one potential site being looked at is a Mundison crater near the lunar south pole, a site only a few hundred kilometers from the potential location of the planned NASA-led Artemis base camp, which could start construction sometime after the middle of the 2020s. So, the multi-module Tiangong space station and the potential future of the Chinese space program. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. And if I've earned it, it'd mean the world to me if you could subscribe to the channel and share these videos with friends and family. And don't forget to launch that like button into orbit. While you're at it, consider supporting Orbital Velocity on Patreon to help me in my goal to bring you amazing human space-like content full-time. Depending on the level you pledge at, you could get access to exclusive graphics and content, as well as your name in future videos. Finally, be sure to follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also visit orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content. Links are in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, at Astra.